Hey everybody, it's Mark, Dr. Deadwax, and it's time for Retracing the Groove 3. And uh, this is where I just kind of talk about records from my collection that I've been listening to and keep these short 10 minutes. And uh, away we go. First thing I've been listening to, uh, I showed uh, my UK copy of this in my Grails video, but this is my play copy. This is uh, Madman Across the Water, Elton John. This is the first. US pressing with the attached booklet. This was owned by Davies and while I hate the magic marker on a record, I think this thing is worse because it's this plastic stick-on tape that you can't get off either. Uh, in excellent condition, really nice copy. This is on the Uni label. The gorgeous Uni label. I always think this looks like the painting uh, of Steffi's that was used for Derek's record cover. And this is a dead, dead first U.S. pressing. A1, B1 stampers, uh, the whole deal. And, uh, yeah. Now this is a great sounding pressing. I mean, if you can't find UK DJMs of this record, just buy the U.S. unis of the first several records because they're really good. And this is, I love this record. This record is, you know, this is a Desert Island desk for me for sure. Uh, Tiny Dancer, it's kind of overplayed. So is Levon. But Razor Face is one of the best songs Elton John has ever done, in my opinion, and probably not an overly popular song. Um, and then Madman Across the Water is it's a standout track from him. It's probably uh, his best or second best track, in my opinion. Indian Sunrise on side two, Holiday Inn, uh, Rotten Peaches, All the Nasties and Goodbye. Great record. Uh, just love that. That's uh, like another palate cleanser for me. I love to go back to that. Next is uh, Bruce Coburn. This is his very first record. This is on True North. This is the first pressing. Uh, this is a great record. This is typical folk rock. Uh, True North. You know, I, I, I love early Bruce Coburn, I think. You know, this is not rocket launcher Bruce Coburn that the world knows. This is, you know... Not saying he is anything like him, but this is this is more Dylan-esque. This is more just him and a guitar and a bass player and a drum player, acoustic guitar, very soft, mellow. You know that very late '60s, early '70s coffee house folk folk rock sound and. Uh, this has some of his uh, just true classic songs on it. Going to the Country and uh, Musical Friends are, are songs that have, that have stuck with him forever. So uh, This is a record you can find for a buck, and you should. It's something you should pick up. I had a friend over for a listening session recently. I was talking about that in another video. Started the evening with this, with this. This is Elvin Jones is on the mountain with uh, Yan Hammer and uh, Gene Perla. And uh, Yan is on uh, keyboards, I believe. And uh, Gene is on acoustic and electric bass. Yeah, Yan is on piano and Moog. And uh, this is on the PM label. It's not a white label. They just have a white label as their label. When I showed this record like a year ago, I talked about how you can still buy this record brand new from PM Records by looking up PM Records online, and it's like 12 or 15 bucks. You can still buy this record brand new from them. I paid that for this. This is great. This is a fusion-y... Uh, yeah, fusiony jazz record, and it's it's really different. And fuck, Elvin Jones is on fire on this record. So if you don't have this, you 
check it out. It, the, the entire album is on YouTube. Must, must, must. Uh, another record, part of the audiophile listening session. Uh, my friend has this and he likes this and he I have a new uh, table and he wanted to hear this because he's familiar with it on my system because this is a stunning incredibly revealing record this is a, a promotional copy this is a Warner Wakefield I've talked about these countless times during the recent inbox challenge um, but uh, you can tell because the vinyl is is see-through so and that means it's on Quiex vinyl and uh, this is a fantastic jazz record it's a fantastic sounding record and it's a fantastic pressing it's a real it's a real gem in my opinion in the uh, in the ECM catalog and uh, the players on here are uh, David Samuels, Michael D. Pasquia on drums and percussion, who's fantastic and completely underrated. Uh, Paul, everybody talks about Dijonette in motion, and in my opinion, Michael D. Pasqua is 99% as good as those two. He was the third drummer for a period when those two weren't available for ECM gigs. Fucking phenomenal touch on this record that drummer has. Uh, Paul McC McChandless, who I believe is in Oregon, David Darling, and uh, Ratzel Harris. Uh, so, you know, I'm always talking about that record. Talking about this record in every fucking video. Uh, Ethiopian, no Ethiopian Night, Stolen Bird, Blue Note, fantastic monster. Buy it. We also spun a uh, side of this, Camel's Mirage. This is a phenomenal prog record. That's the first UK. Uh, we spun this just for the hell of it. Um, so this is a Japanese pressing. You can tell by the EMS80324 code that this is a Japanese second pressing. The best pressing in the world of this record is a first UK but very few first UKs, they're all trashed, they're all partied to shit. The second best pressing of this record in the world is a Japanese third pressing, which ha has pro use on it. So this is a second pressing. This is the second best Japanese pressing, and in my opinion, this is the third best pressing in the world. Fourth best pressings are North American Wallies, in my opinion. Uh, and that's the Japanese label. If you see one that has the words pro use, on there pro dash use that's the one you want to buy especially if you can get that for under 100 bucks anytime uh, this does not like the pro use in this one do not never came with the poster and the stickers so um, don't think that it's not complete it comes with a, a tip in kind of a thing so so this just is head and shoulders above a commercial pressing or a standard pressing and you know, in all honesty, people, the mofis of this record are completely another piece of shit unless you've got the uh, the uh, the one in the box, the UHQR, which is like 800 bucks. So nobody has that. Um, we also spun this. Talked about this recently. Thank you, Alan. Uh, Quiex 2 Love Over Gold, just absolutely phenomenal sounding pressing with uh, Master Disc BK for Bill Kipper and the Dead Wax. Also spun this. This is Tropia. I talked about John Tropia recently. Uh, just a kind of disco-y, funky fusion guitar record. All guitar, instrumental, no lyric. Um, and this is just excellent, excellent record. And it has like the Breckers on it and uh, David Sanborn. So it's got that whole kind of uh, East Coast crew on it so um, this is a dollar bin record so if you see that grab that that is that will not let you down for a dollar and then uh, after he left I gave this a spin uh, I think it was uh, Roger Coleman this is the amazing amazing adventures of Simon Simon by uh, John Sermon and it also has Jack DeJanet on it and uh, John Sermon plays soprano and baritone saxophones, bass, clarinet, and synthesizers. 
and Jack DeJohnette plays drums, congas, and electric piano. I'm pretty sure it was Roger Coleman who showed this, but if it was somebody else, I apologize for not giving you the proper credit. But uh, this is a great ECM record. This has really cool uh, synthesizer parts on it, and and great, uh, uh, just great drumming. It, it goes in and out occasionally, so it's 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 good. It, it's in and then it's out, but mostly it's in. So it really appeals to me. This is a great record. So that is um, Retracing the Groove 3. Those are the records uh, I listened to when a buddy of mine was over the other night. Uh, he helped me dial in the last couple things on my turntable, which is, you know, it's always nice to have people with way more experience come over and help you out. That's what I do for other friends of mine. It's nice to have people come over and help me. So uh, that's it, everybody. That's Retracing the Groove 3. Have a great day. Keep the records back.